Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Today video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with the Radeon 7 graphics cards from AMD, because there have been a couple of developments on this particular GPU, which are not particularly great news. So we're going to start things out with the number of GPUs which is said to be available. Now, when I initially broke the fact that Radeon 7 would indeed be a thing, and it would of course be based upon the Vega uh, 7nm architecture, one of my sources had told me that we would indeed see a limited production run. I was told maybe 10 or 20,000 for the first uh, initial set of graphics cards, and then with a possibility of more being available in the future. But according to sources over at Tweaktown, even that number seems very ambitious. And the reason is because AMD are actually losing money for every GPU sold. So how many cards will be available? Well, it appears like 5,000 or fewer units will actually be produced. That's right, 5,000 Radeon 7 graphics cards, which is not a very high number. I'm going to continue the news before I give my thoughts on this, though. Furthermore, uh, initial uh, reports were that the uh, Radeon 7 graphics card would have 128 ROPs. Uh, the folks over at Anantec were apparently told this by AMD representatives and a couple of other websites reported much the same. But this apparently is not the case. And apparently AMD have been getting hold of various people in the media and have indeed clarified that we only see 64 ROPs on the back end of the graphics card. So the rest of the specifications are, of course, accurate, though. We see a 60 compute units, 1800 megahertz, and all of the other bits and pieces that have been reported before were accurate, but the number of raster operators is half what was originally anticipated. Now, this is going to be interesting to me because as folks who are familiar with the Vega 64 slash 56 will testify, that GPU had some issues. One was being memory bandwidth starved, but also fill rate was kind of one of the big deals of the GPU, particularly when going up in resolution. To AMD's credit, they have released some uh, benchmarks for the particular GPU in question, Radeon 7, and of course have pitted it against the Vega 64, so we can see that yes, there is some definite improvements there. How much? Well, of course, it does depend, as always, on the application. We also don't have all of the details about in-game quality settings and so on, but 20%, 30%, 40% or greater in some applications is certainly noticeable then for if you were to be able to purchase the card. The MI50 and the Radeon 7 GPU are essentially brothers with having a very similar architecture. So it was hoped that FP64 slash double precision performance would be up there. But no, this has actually been confirmed by AMD to not be the case. Instead, we see very similar performance to Vega 64 with 1 slash 32 uh, FP64 uh, performance, which is certainly disappointing for anyone who was hoping to purchase this card for workstation purposes. So what are my thoughts then on the performance of a Radeon 7? Well, I have mixed feelings until, of course, we actually see final reviews of this GPU. We can only base our assumptions on AMD's own numbers and released pricing. But early indications, at least in terms of performance, are pretty favourable. It seems faster than an RTX 2080 graphics card. But Let's be honest, it could be a hundred times faster than an RTX 2080 graphics card, but if you can't buy it, it doesn't matter. And with such a limited production run, these cards are obviously going to get snapped up pretty quickly, and then you can imagine them becoming basically collector's items. Uh, this really does seem like AMD just want their name in the news to, rem to remind people that they do, of course, produce GPUs, and they are not by any means finished in the high-end market. It would appear then that Navi is the GPU that AMD are banking on later this year. It is, of course, a 7nm part. And from the comments of the company, we can certainly get a few things from it. The first is it's going to be a replacement for Polaris. That does not mean then it's going to necessarily be a very high-end part. 
but the performance of this card is still in question. But of course, most likely we're going to see multiple SKUs of the GPU. AMD have also confirmed that we're going to see variants which do indeed support HBM2, but most likely most of the models from what has been uh, murmured from the company will indeed be utilizing GDDR6 memory, which makes sense. We also know very little about the underlying architecture of Navi. It's possible it's the SuperSIMD architecture that we saw patents for and I did do an analysis of, and that could certainly be very capable of running ray tracing along with other compute uh, related tasks simultaneous to graphics, but with that said, it's also possible it's just a continuation of GCN or it's entirely different because we also know that Arcturus is going to follow Navi about a year or possibly a little later. I've also written to a couple of AIB partners to ask if they have any ideas regarding availability of Radeon 7 and they have told me no, not yet in terms of review samples or their general availability of the product. And this does also match what Tweaktown and a couple of other websites are reporting, that it's very unlikely that AMD will provide the GPUs, the cores, available to partners, which means that essentially we're only going to see the GPU available from AMD itself. So my thoughts then on the Radeon 7 is that I think it's gonna be a really cool GPU, uh, I do suspect people who buy the card are certainly going to enjoy great performance, but it is not going to be a great answer to the RTX 2080 for the general consumer because there are just not going to be enough of them produced to make it exactly a viable competitor to the RTX 2080 and the other uh, cards available from NVIDIA. Moving from AMD to Intel, there are a couple of developments on Intel's CPU lineup. No, not another delay to the 10 and M process. Although let's face it, much of the CES announcements from Intel were certainly concerning 10 and M and for them to remind us that Ice Lake would indeed be coming in the not too distant future, they promise. But when it comes to the here and now with the ninth generation of CPUs, which is of course the Coffee Lake Refresh, one of the more interesting things that we've been hearing are the rumors that we would indeed be seeing a series of ninth generation CPUs with the iGPU disabled. You can spot the models of CPU which have the 630 GPU disabled because they have the F suffix and they do include the 9900. The website Tom's Hardware actually has a report concerning the pricing of these GPUs as well as the other specifications. Now there was a couple of hopes that we had regarding these CPUs. The first is that they would be, well, cheaper because they have the GPU, iGPU disabled. There was also the vague hope that we might see a very small increase in clock speed, even if it's only the base, maybe 100 megahertz, but neither of those things appear to be true. In fact, the F series of processors, along with the vanilla K series of CPUs have identical pricing. The only benefit actually that you might have for disabled iGPU CPUs wow, that's really complex to say, is that you might actually have general availability being higher because the CPUs obviously are already pretty complex to manufacture. We've seen yield issues for the ninth generation, particularly the 9900K, which really had a price premium near launch and still is fluctuating some. So maybe this might help to bring down the cost. The problem, however, obviously of buying one of these CPUs is, well, multiple. Depending on the GPU you're pairing it with, you might have uh, slower exports because obviously quick sync and that type of thing is kind of handy. Also, it's nice to have an iGPU, if only for fault testing, like, you know, you might have a GPU that suddenly dies on you, or maybe you're upgrading your GPU, so you're selling one on eBay or whatever, and you're waiting for the new one to arrive. So it's kind of nice to have an iGPU, uh, but the one good thing I will say is Intel are being abundantly clear on the package to say that it requires a discrete GPU to function. You can't, you know, mistake it, and it's much like a Ryzen series of CPUs from AMD. I have no issues at all with Intel releasing this line of CPUs. I just wish that there was a price difference to reflect the iGPU missing. Now at the start of this video, 
we of course went over the fact that the Radeon 7 GPUs will have limited availability. And Intel apparently are very happy to continue this trend, because we have news of the i9-9990XE CPU. And this news has actually been picked up on Anantec. Now, the headline for the CPU is very impressive indeed. It's a 14-core CPU, 255-watt TDP, and has a turbo frequency up to 5 gigahertz. So with a 4 GHz base, 44 PCIe lanes, it seems mighty impressive. But there's a smidgen of a problem, just a small one. Good luck buying it. Apparently, Intel are going to release very limited quantities of this CPU. One way you're going to be able to purchase it is through certain system integrators, OEMs. Although, which ones you will be able to purchase a system through which actually feature this CPU, we don't know yet. The second way that you can allegedly purchase this CPU is through auction. And I don't really have any other details other than to say it's through auction. Whether that's going to be through Craigslist or eBay or something entirely different, maybe it's for a charity event, who the heck knows. Anantec are apparently reaching out along with other members of the press, but Intel so far have not responded yet because, well, they didn't apparently intend this information to be made public just yet. So one of the reasons I can assume that this is being done this way is because it's basically a PR piece. Intel want to say that, hey, look, we've released a CPU that's got all of these cores and this clock speed. It's a bit of a shame, honestly, it's limited quantities, because I have a couple of friends who actually I was talking with about the CPU, and they were basically drooling at the prospect of 14 cores. You can probably say it's going to be very similar in gaming performance to, let's say, the 9900K, Obviously, depending on how all of the turbo frequencies break down, depending on the number of active cores. But assuming that the chip overclocks even with some level of success, it's going to be very impressive. But if you're also doing other things like video encoding or virtual machine work, and you get the idea, it's going to be an absolute monster of a CPU. Assuming it was possible to sell it at a pretty decent price, I suspect that some people might even opt to go for it other than the higher core count processors. So once again, it's a real shame that Intel aren't making this CPU available to the general consumer, at least, you know, in high quantities. Although it does paint a pretty rosy picture of what we might see from the 10 nm CPUs. We can imagine certainly we'll see higher clock speeds still from uh, Intel's future CPUs, which of course are going to be based upon Ice Lake and maybe even higher core. Also, a very small piece of NVIDIA news. I normally don't cover driver updates, but this is going to be one of those times I do. The NVIDIA 417.71 drivers are now available. And the reason that I'm covering this piece of news is because, of course, these drivers are the drivers that you're going to need to enable uh, your NVIDIA graphics card like Pascal or Turing to function with a FreeSync monitor or more accurately to function with FreeSync mode enabled. So just a quick reminder, uh, NVIDIA are not uh, certifying all of the FreeSync monitors available. There is just a very select number that they have uh, said that this definitely works. We're 100% sure. So you can manually enable it on your particular screen but NVIDIA are just not giving you a promise. They're not going to pinky swear that your monitor will indeed work if they have not verified it in their laboratories. But if you, for example, had an AMD card and then you've just upgraded to like a 2080 or what have you, and you own a FreeSync monitor already from an AMD card, then obviously this is just a bonus because if it works, then absolutely fantastic. And you know, it hasn't cost you anything. With all of that said, I'm going to get going. So hopefully you have enjoyed the videos. Normal stuff if you have, like, share, comment and subscribe. You can also find us on Patreon, which of course is linked in the video description, along with some Amazon affiliate links. So if you need to buy some razors or, you know, some gum from Amazon, if you use affiliate links, it does indeed give us a few pennies, which of course helps the channel. So take care. Have a great day. Bye.